can you hear me so today i thought uh, we should clarify some aspects of what is called random and fixed effects model in meta analysis so we know that uh, there is uh, variation is widespread in nature and uh, it is not exaggeration to say that it is universal in biology field variation is universal and to describe understand predict and analyze variation we use statistics so just keep in mind that statistics uh, role or one of the prime role is to describe variation understand variation and also predict and analyze variation so the question is if you have a set of data obtained from observing or measuring some indices in uh, human beings or for that matter in any living beings how do you describe that variation one way is that you say the variation ranges from a to b that is a range or you can uh, also describe differences among the various measurements but uh, let us take an example like uh, weight you have taken weight of six individuals and you have taken systolic blood pressure of six individuals and this is what you got so one way to describe is that weight varies from 40 kg to 90 kg that is one way the second way uh, could be that you take out mean of this and see how much differences are there from the mean so mean of uh, 40 to 90 will come out to be 65 perhaps right 65 will be the mean so you can say that let me see how much is the difference between 65 and the individual observations so you will say 65 minus 40 that is 25 but when you come to 90 65 minus 90 will be minus 25 so similarly 65 minus 50 will be 15 but 65 minus 80 will be minus 15 so if you want to describe by adding these numbers of the differences from the mean then what do you get you get zero so uh, and obviously the variation is not zero the problem is coming because of the minus and how do you get rid of minus square it so uh, once you square it then you can add it up and that will come in thousands i'm not going to do this uh, right now perhaps uh, 13000 or 14000 but then you can take mean of that that is there are six observations and square of the differences comes to let us say 12000 then you divide it by 6 and say the variation is uh, so much that square of the difference mean of the square of differences is 2000 something like this that is has been given a name uh, which is called uh, also variance so similarly you can do with the other measurements also so just keep that in mind that whenever there are differences there is variation to describe it one is range but the more formal mathematical way is to describe it as uh, variance if you take uh, in variance you have squared it so it will be if this weight was in kg you have to say kg square now kg square is not interpretable by you know people so you can take a square root and then convert it into kg 
in which case that will become standard deviation right and when you do this type of exercise in something about uh, not about sample but about population then that is uh, not called standard deviation it is called standard error but the word variance is used both both for sample as well as population so just keep this as a background thing second thing you have to remember is that when we do meta analysis we essentially take out average we have done five studies five studies have given five different effect sizes let us say if it is to determine effect you do randomized trial five different effect sizes you take out average of that and that will be called a uh, yeah, summary measure or summary effect size so a question is uh, the class has 200 boys 100 girls average weight of boys is 70 kg girls 40 kg so what is the average weight of the class so one student uh, can easily do 70 plus 40 110 divided by 2 which comes to 55 so everybody agrees with 55 no don't agree so what is what is the correct average then ah okay 70 into 200 plus 40 into 100 divided by 300 how much does it come to 60 right so uh, the, uh, why did i make mistake 55 and correct is 60 i made mistake because i ignored the fact the boys are twice in number compared to girls right if i just keep in mind the twice the number then i can just do give uh, twice the weight to 70 kg which means 2 into 70 which is 140 plus 1 into 40 which is 40 180 divided by 3 also give 60 right so you have to just keep in mind the proportion or the relative uh, size of the boys and girls you can't if they were equal then my formula will work right in uh, meta analysis every study has different sample size so sample size has to be given due consideration when you are taking out average and uh, i i'll come to that so average has to be weighted average weighted according to several factors one factor is sample size right uh, so for example this is done in repman and those who are now used to it they will know that there is a experimental arm there is a control arm total number of people in experimental arm are 100 in study 1 100 and 100 100 in control 100 in experimental in study 2 uh, number of people are 200 in experimental 200 in control so everywhere you will see 10% of people 10% of people are getting the event event may be death for example so 10% people died in uh, study 1 in the experimental arm 10% died in the control arm and 10% died in the study 2 as well but in a control arm 20% people died 20% uh, in uh, study 1 20% study 2 also because in study 2 the sample size was 200 so 40 people died so weight as you can see is very much related to the sample size in this case 33% and 66% isn't it so since the sample size is double in the study 2 weight is also double right so that is what uh, you can observe in this but let us take two studies weight reduction this was the hypothesis weight reduction decreases risk of mi among obese individuals over 7 7 year period study 1 had 
thousand experimental, thousand control. Study two also had thousand experimental, thousand control. So superficially looking, it will appear as if both studies in meta-analysis should get same weightage. But if you look at the events, number of events in study one is only one in experimental, two in control. Whereas in study two, it is 15 experimental and 100 in control. So, do you think they should get the same weight? No? Which one should get more weight? Study two. Yes. So, you are right that uh, weight should not depend only on sample size, but it should depend also on number of events. The reason is, study one is Fragile. Fragile studies means one more event in experimental arm and there is no effect of the intervention. Right? One more event in study 2 in the experimental arm doesn't change anything materially. It remains almost same 50%, maybe 49 point some percent uh, reduction. So, I think you have to keep in mind that it is not only sample size but also number of events in case of uh, binary outcome that you uh, that determines the weight. So combining this, uh, uh, combining this number of events and sample size, you can have a formula. That formula takes into account both of these things and gives you a method of calculating weight. So the formula is given in the uh, Revman handbook. If you go there, you can find what is called statistical algorithm and that will tell you what is the, how do you determine the weight. So, in this example, you can see study 1 and study 2. Both have same sample size. 100 in experimental, 100 control. 100 experimental, 100 control. Same sample size, right? But number of events in study 2 is double the number of events in study 1. 10%, 20%, 20%, 40%. 20%, right? So in both arms, the number of events in study 2 is double the number of study 1. You can see the weight also. 33% and 66%. So now it is clear that the weight depends on sample size. Weight also depends on event rate. So the example which I gave you where thousand, 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 thousand subjects were there in every arm in both studies, but number of events were 1 versus 2 and 50 versus 100. If you do a meta-analysis, this is how it looks like. You see, it gives only 2% weight to the study 1 and 98% weight to the study 2, right? So, sample size is all same, but the weight is distributed, as you can see, more or less according to the number of events. So, the formula combines these two things. That is what you have to keep in mind. So, weighting of the studies, I uh, and another thing you might like to see uh, is uh, in study 1, do you see the confidence interval is very wide, right, very wide. In study 2, confidence interval is very narrow. Now, one word which is used is precision. How precise are the results? So, which study gives precise results? Study 1 or study 2? Study 2. Precise means con narrow confidence interval, right? And uh, when there is wide confidence interval, that is imprecise. So, that is another thing which uh, you will come in grade also. So, another way to say this in one word uh, this is what I say because I think one word will capture both sample size and event rate 
and we didn't discuss about continuous outcome like blood pressure like hemoglobin a1c cholesterol that is not like an event it is a number so if we do a study with such numerical data then we can't talk about events right but everywhere confidence interval is there right whether you do uh, with uh, outcome of uh, cholesterol or d dimer or you do it with uh, death as an outcome everywhere confidence interval will come that also gives you precision so why don't we say nobody says this but i i say that study is precision weighted can we say this it is weighted according to precision if there is high precision then more weight in the previous example study 1 and 2 which one had higher precision study 1 or 2 2 so high precision got more weight low precision less weight right can't we say this so we can say precision weighted now precision is inversely related to error because the confidence interval is calculated based on standard error so obviously more error means wide confidence interval less precision less error means narrow confidence interval so more precision so we can we can even say that weight is inversely related to the error right but it is not uh, error in general sense it is standard error and square of the standard error is called variance right so <coughs> weight essentially is inversely related to the variance right so i am taking you from simple things like sample size and events to a statistical description of what gives the weight weight is inverse of the variance right so you must remember this word because we will use it a lot subsequently uh to repeat it it is to capture both sample size and events and be applicable also to continuous outcome we use one word and i use that studies are weighted according to precision since precision depends on error which is standard error less error more weight more error less weight and square of standard error is called variance so we can also say weight is inverse of the variance more variance less weight less variance more weight now but whatever you do you should not leave out your common sense that is the fundamental thing common sense must be applied in uh, anything which you look at statistics because uh, if you remember we talked about uh, uh, point estimates confidence interval etc for heterogeneity but i told you that you should also use your eyeballs to convince yourself now here you can use your eyeballs and tell me if there are two studies which are done on some outcome like mortality some intervention was studied forget about uh, what is on the left hand side but just look at the figure figure has two studies and both have almost equal confidence interval isn't it now in this case first question you should think about is uh unfortunately the results favors control which means treatment is harmful treatment is not helpful it is harmful it is like adverse effect of the drug right the, the drugs are having maybe maybe you are talking about uh, incidence of vomiting and post operatively for example right so if you do surgery versus no surgery or you use some injection morphine pethidine versus no morphine or you may compare morphine versus some other analgesic and you uh, study vomiting 
So you are basically trying to study whether there are adverse effects, whether there is death due to adverse effect of this drug or not, if the outcome is mortality, and this is the result. Now you tell me, using your common sense, do you feel fully, fully confident or not that this uh, increases mortality? You feel confident? Both studies are saying almost the same thing or not? One, one is increasing by two odds, one is increasing by three odds. And though both have confidence interval, which is quite reasonably narrow. So, compared to this, you look at this, this example. Again, there are two studies. Almost uh, whenever you see one study shows no effect, the other study shows harm or increase in mortality. So, first thing as a person doing meta-analysis, your job is to find out why these results are different, right? So, you look at whether the type of patients are different, whether the intervention dose is different, whether route of administration is different, whether uh, one is short-term mortality, one is long-term mortality, what is the difference between the two studies? And you looked at everything, you don't find any difference. Both studies have the same kind of population, same intervention, same route of administration, same dose, and same uh, outcome measure. Right? So, you have no reason, you could not find any reason for heterogeneity. Then you decide to combine, which means you want to make conclusions. So, my question is, do you feel certain that this drug increases mortality. And just look at the picture and try to think, uh, use common sense. When one study, both studies have almost same confidence interval, so they get same weight. Do you feel confident to say that a study in this intervention increases mortality? No. And no, because, yeah, even if confidence interval is similar, why will you not feel confident? The reason is, one study is not showing increase in mortality. In the, in the previous example, both were showing increase in mortality, right? So, uh, when you, if you are asked to summarize this to your students, in this case, uh, students don't know about meta-analysis, don't know odds ratio, confidence interval, they just want to know, sir, does it increase mortality or not? What would you say in this example? Yes. And if you are to summarize this to the students, Students want to know, sir, are we sure we this increases mortality or not? What would you say? No. Right. Now, let us see. If we do the meta-analysis, then what gives uh, or what captures this common sense? Right. This is a meta-analysis of the first study. Right. Where you find, again, odds ratio 2 and 3, weight is 50%, 50%, you see? And this is the summary, right? Summary is, uh, this is fixed effects model, written fixed, and you can see that summary is giving clear cut, 2.45 times increase in odds of mortality, and uh, confidence interval is also reasonably narrow. If you do it with random effects, same thing, again you get almost same result. So, your common sense was right, whether to use, you use fixed effect, model, whatever model you use. Model is nothing but formula. Whatever formula you use, you get excess mortality due to this intervention, right? 
so your conclusion or your suggestion to the students was right now let us look at this this example where you didn't want to say that we are sure it increases mortality fixed effects model gives almost same confidence interval 2.45 ranging from 2.13 to 2.81 so it doesn't it is not consistent with your common sense right the summary is summary estimate is showing yes there is increase in mortality not consistent with your common sense and this is using fixed effects model but if you look at this this diamond crosses this line one which means it is telling you we are not certain right so this is done by random effects model so which was capturing your common sense fixed effect or random effect random effect is capturing your common sense so uh, as you can see that at uh, in uh, practice often you should use your common sense and see whether it fits with the summary estimate diamond given by the meta analysis software or not and you find that it is uh, random one is consistent the reason is that the two different approaches are dealing with inter study differences differently you were not certain because two studies were give, giving different effect size right in the first example both were giving similar effect size in the second example both were not giving there were differences so how do you deal with differences between the study this is the question uh, which is uh, actually answered by this fixed and effects model one, there are three options and you tell me which one do you feel is you are comfortable if there are differences between the studies one option is always ignore forget about it you do the summary second is you always consider right and third could be that ignore if differences are little consider it if differences are substantial so how many people go for a nobody b one person and c so everybody wants to go for c fortunately b and c will give you the, the same uh, same result as you will see uh, uh many people do option a that's right that's right nene that i will come to that so you see now the question is how to consider this right as you know that when you do the same experiment again and again there will be some variation so i give a example that suppose today uh, government of uh, the state says that you know we will like to see whether computer based teaching of mathematics is better than conventional teaching let us say so it brings uh some teachers to the capital trains them and says we are not going to implement all over the state you first go and do randomized trial so each state teacher trained by the central team on computer based teaching goes and conducts a randomized trial of uh, some class let's say class 6 or whatever divides the students in a random uh, yeah, or you can say allocation to two groups in one group is given computer based teaching one is group is given conventional teaching and then takes test of both and looks at the scores now same intervention is being given same computer same model same software everything do you think all teachers will get the same effect size what do you think they will come up with the same effect size 
this is the difference we got between this computer based and conventional hmm? no they will not there may be many reasons for this what reasons could be there students aptitude yes teachers aptitude yes and no no you may uh, it also depends on the network na if if it is uh, if it is uh, internet based then how uh, good is your network it will it depend on electricity supply or not so many factors come into play so the effects will vary and uh, the question is how do you capture that variation so you remember my first example i told you that you take out the mean take the difference from the mean square it and add it up and then you can take uh, a average also do you remember the first two slides same thing is done here take out the mean of the effect size take out the differences of each effect size from the mean square the differences take a weighted sum only thing difference is that here you will have to take weighted sum because these are studies these are not individuals right there you had individuals so each if each had one sample size here you have different sample sizes so you may have to take weighted sum and that gives you total variance right some variation is expected by chance some variation is probably because of random factors unknown factors or multiple factors which are possible but we don't know which one is this so between the study variance will be total variance minus expected variance right now between study variance is uh, calculated in a meta analysis by considering that effect size which you see across the studies is uh, has a random variation so it will follow a normal curve or bell shaped curve if you had thousands of studies and you plotted a graph it will follow a uh, bell shaped curve so you calculate that variance inter study variance based on this and add that variance in the weighting of the studies you remember i said weight is inverse of the variance but which variance you add one variance is study specific each study has some variance right because all the patients in the study don't behave the same way right some improve some don't improve some have if you are testing anti hypertensive drugs some will have decrease of 5 mm some will have decrease of 10 mm some will have decrease of 7 mm so each study has a variance and now you have between study variance also right so two variances are there <coughs> one i call intra study variance and the other is inter study variance right you remember that uh, we often say intra observer and inter observer intra observer is within one observer and <coughs> inter <coughs> an inter observer is when you have two observers right two or more observers <coughs> so similarly variance is intra study within study variance and inter study variance which is between study variance <coughs> so that brings you to the real difference between random and fixed effect in fixed effects we only use intra study variance <coughs> within study variance to give the weight in inter study you have two variances intra study and inter study both variance go into the weight right
as i told you intrastudy variance depends on depends on what we discussed that in the previous slides the variance which we measure that determines the precision i told you it depends on what sample size event rate uh, if it is continuous outcome like blood pressure then the standard deviation or standard errors and so on whereas between study variance is only specific to that meta analysis so you have 10 studies how the effect size varies across the study this is the uh, what is uh, captured in the inter study variance <coughs> so i said that weight is given inverse of the variance so where are you increasing the weight in random effects or fixed effects if you hmm? random because you are in increasing the denominator and weight is inverse of the variance right so there will be more weight uh, but overall it has to be 100% so that 100% will be distributed across all the studies there are small studies there are medium size studies there are large studies right in a small studies also you added something you added same amount in large studies also right so as you can imagine small studies which had wide confidence interval were getting some weight but by adding this inter study variance which is same in the small same in the larger so relatively small study will get more weight or less weight compared to the fixed effects more weight because uh, you are adding same amount in the small as well as in the large that is the inter study variance whereas in fixed effect you ignore inter study you only use intra study variance right so if you do that tell me <clears throat> will uh, summary point estimate uh, change dramatically or it will remain roughly the same it it remains roughly the same roughly the same there will be some change but not much change but what about confidence interval confidence interval will be wider larger yes wider confidence interval in case of uh, adding inter study variance and i told you inter study variance is added in random effects model right <coughs> so what will be or uh, effect on p value associated with summary effect p value is less than 0.05 if the vertical line line of no effect is not crossed right where is more chances of crossing in fixed effect or random effect random effect more chances of crossing and you saw that example where fixed effect was not crossing random effect was crossing so very often when you got used fixed effect and you got p value less than 0.05 when you do random effect you may find that p value is not less than 0.05 right because now the confidence interval is wide it is crossing to the other side okay so <clears throat> but when you are uh, doing meta analysis to publish a paper do you want to see p value less than 0.05 or you don't care you want to see p value less than 0.05 so therefore you will use fixed effects or random effects <laughs> fixed effect right <laughs> so this is the dilemma you see this is the main dilemma and uh, i already told you weight of the smaller studies will be relatively more in random effects compared to fixed effects huh? so this look at this uh, example <laughs> you can see that uh, there is variation among the studies fixed effect doesn't care about between study variance it gives some point estimate and some confidence interval random effects 
gives wider confidence interval right <clears throat> here studies are more similar isn't it less variation between the studies can you see this because the center yellow thing is point estimate and this is confidence interval so what do you find whether it is fixed effect or random effect it gives the same result so when there is not much variation between the studies then it gives the same result so b and c you remember i told you uh, ignore always consider always or in between actually b and c are roughly the same so <clears throat> this is an example of that <clears throat> I, my example was also similar to this you see this uh, two studies are saying that treatment is beneficial two studies are saying that we don't know but maybe harmful fixed effect does takes out average of these two doesn't care about between study variation whereas the random effect considering that the studies vary so much it is giving a wider confidence interval crossing the line of no effect and therefore in this p value will be less than 0.0 uh, more than 0.05 whereas fixed effects model will give you p value less than 0.05 <clears throat> Hmm. A reviewer, A reviewers, those uh, I will come to that. I will tell you that story about uh, difference between the reviewers. So <clears throat> here somebody did uh, you see uh, meta analysis? You see that diamond, which is one is fixed, one is random, and fixed is narrow uh, away from the line of one, which is no effect. So p value. less than 0.05 p value in fact is given here p value is 0.00 which means less than 0.005 right but random effects p value is 0.17 and it is crossing that line <coughs> this is the usual thing this is what usually happens when you use fixed effect random effect however <coughs> sometimes you will get situation where things are different because i am not telling you exactly the formula the way formula works so don't be surprised because you will say dr prasad taught us this way but it is coming different way in this example actually fixed effect is is giving p value of 0.8 whereas random effect is giving p value less than 0.005 so it all depends on <coughs> what is the distribution of the studies so it's not exactly fixed but this is a very rare occurrence so don't carry this too much into your mind but this is an exception to the rule <clears throat> the formula is constructed that way so so essentially <clears throat> when you think about fixed and random effects remember what happens in simple interest and compound interest in banks in simple interest what is the difference between simple interest and compound interest who keeps fixed deposit in banks rims doctors don't keep they don't have enough money to save and fix <clears throat> principal that is called principal <clears throat> some interest Ah, so basically, you what you mean to say, if you keep it for more than one time cycle, then in simple interest you get interest only on the principal, but in compound interest you get interest on the principal as well as on the interest which you earned earlier, right? So two sources of interest. No, in compound there are two sources of interest: principal as well as the interest which you have earned. Some people will compound on daily basis also, right? so that is one thing which you have to keep in mind so between simple interest and compound interest and uh, i must tell you that uh, i uh, i thought somebody who must have invented compound interest must be genius no <laughs> he must have thought how to attract more people initially they must be doing only simple interest 
So he changed the philosophy of fixed deposits, isn't it? So conceptually, it must be a big advance, maybe a century ago, but whenever it was, they must have considered as a smart advance on uh, this, isn't it? And computationally, you know the formula is different for simple and compound, right? Essentially, what you get practically is, you get more money in compound compared to simple, right? So same thing is about fixed and random effects. Now that uh, you know, conceptually they are different. Computationally, calculations are different because of uh, considering consideration of inter-study variance. And there are practical consequences of this. So that will give us summary of this. <clears throat> Conceptually, fixed effect says that all studies have the same underlying true effect, right? Which means between study there is no variation. That is why they ignore completely, right? There is no true variation between this. The truth in each study is the same. So if you have had infinite sample size, even though you see some variation, all would have in finite sample size will given the same effect. That is the underlying assumption. That is why it is called fixed effect. It should not be called effects, fixed effect model. Right? Because the effect is fixed. You are getting little, little differences because of differences in the sample. Either number is different or kind of study subjects are different. That is why you are getting differences. But otherwise, underlying truth is the same. So effect is fixed. All differences are due to differences in the sample size or sample type. It may be the characteristics of the sample also which may differ. And there is nothing called uh, more studies. These are the studies at hand. This is all which is there. And you have to conclude from this. Random effect says that no. You find the differences which you find. There is some truth in it. There may be true differences. Right? Some we know. It may be related to the of course uh, uh, <clears throat> sample size. But there are other factors which we don't know. And that will be the reason why there are uh, there is a distribution of the effect size not same effect in every study which underlies the you know uh, <clears throat> conceptually so uh, if you imagine there are infinite number of possible studies on the same question then what will be the distribution and what will be the variance and this is what how we calculate that is the underlying concept in, uh, in the calculation <clears throat> but uh, computationally as i told you the difference is only in the denominator of the uh, uh, weighting, which is inverse of the variance. Variance is different. In fixed effect model, only one source of variance is there, which is sample. In random effects model, it is the sample, which is the intra-study variation. Intra-study variation comes from the sample. So intra-study variation as well as inter-study variation, both are given uh, uh, weightage in random effects, whereas in fixed effect, it's only the intra-study variance. And practically, what happens is, the uh, summary estimate, point estimate is roughly similar. Some differences may be there. But confidence interval is narrower in fixed effect model. And uh, it is wider confidence interval in random effect model. And as we discussed, smaller studies get relatively more weight in random effects as compared to fixed effect, for which some people are uncomfortable. Why should you give, get more weight to the small effect, small studies? They are poorly conducted, single, single center, may not be well designed or whatever. So <clears throat> that is in essence of this. Now the question is, which model is better? Each model has its supporters. Oxford people, uh, they prefer fixed effect model. And the reasons they give is that look here. First of all, there is nothing called infinite number of studies. Our studies always have finite number. Uh, we need to make conclusions. Not 
all the time remain in uncertainty. So just go and use fixed effect model, right? And in contrast to this, McMaster uh, people are more in favor of random effects model. They say that, look here, you should not ignore inter-study of differences. And uh, if there is no variation, then we get the same result. Whether you use random effect or fixed effect. I showed you one example of that. Then why not use random effect all the time? It will give us as good as fixed effect when there is no variation. If there is variation, it will consider the variation and give some due consideration. And therefore, why not, uh, be, uh, why not live with wider confidence interval? Uh, which means, which one is conservative? Conservative means you don't uh, shout that, uh, yes, yes, we got some effect. Which one is conservative? Uh, well, conservative doesn't mean what you don't consider. Conservative means uh, when do you announce conclusion uh, that, yes, yes, we got p-value less than 0.5. So, uh, if you don't announce frequently, that means you are conservative. So, random is conservative. All right, so <clears throat> McMaster says it is better to remain conservative in this world. Many studies have many reasons why they differ. We must take that into account and not be focused on getting p-value less than 0 0.05 and therefore ignore the inter-study differences. So <clears throat> certainly everybody will agree that when there is heterogeneity across the study results, use random effects model. But when you, you are in doubt whether to use this one or that one, uh, at least Cochrane reviewer uh, or Cochrane handbook says use both fixed effects as well as random effects. If both gives the same result, then you are confident in announcing that yes, the findings are robust. If they give you different results, then it is better to wait for some more studies before you announce that yes, we have got something uh, definitive. Thank you. Mm. Random and fixed will give you the same result. Yes. Ah. Mixed effect. Mixed effect, yes. Mixed effect is when you know some factors which, which may be responsible for differences, then you can already tell the uh, software that use these, these factors as contributing to the variation. So, uh, variation which is explained is not random, right? You can predict that it will be cause of variation. Whatever you cannot predict or cannot pinpoint, that is the part of random variation. So, hmm. No, no, you, you will not know that. You will do it and then come to the conclusion. Dr. Pragya? Yes. Variation, intrastudy variation is there. Intrastudy variation is there 
what it says is that underlying truth is the same if you had in finite sample size you will get the same result in each study whatever variation you see is because of differences in sample size and sample type so so you have to do that because each one may have a small small sample size but when you do the meta analysis each study was uh, inconclusive but meta analysis is conclusive this is why you do it no no it may be negative results also more event rate doesn't mean positive results it may be more event rate uh, may be negative results the reason we give more weight is events what is events events is number of deaths for example so you know the you are observing na so let, let, let me answer that uh, the first question that uh, you if you don't give any weightage to the events right then you are going to make mistakes and the mistakes will be that studies the example which i give you 1000 1000 1000 1000 in one study there were only three events one in experimental two in control in another study 50 in intervention and 100 in control right if you give same weight to both the studies and then imagine uh, the first study why did it have only one event or two events i didn't tell you the whole story uh, the whole story is that uh, first study was done in schools schools also lot of obese children as there no so 2000 obese children they were randomized 1000 and 1000 and some teachers were also obese and the outcome was mortality uh, uh, outcome was mi children don't get mi right only two teachers got mi in the control group and one teacher get, got it in the uh, this uh, experimental group right second study was done in community in those who are more than 45 years old so they got 100 events in the control arm and 50 in the uh, yeah, experimental arm do you think they should get more weight uh, the equal weight no na so there is always some reason why event is less A less event means less information just imagine if one more teacher in the experimental arm had event mi is so common in uh, adult people one more teacher had event in the uh, experimental arm in the school then the event will be 2 and 2 means there is a, the intervention has no effect suppose one more had in the the teacher group three in the experimental and two in the uh, control then you will say that intervention is harmful but the second study will not change its conclusion because of one or two more events in the second study 50 will become 51 uh, um, yeah 51 or may become 52 but it can't become 100 so it is it is a much more robust conclusion giving study the second one the first one is a very fragile uh, study which changes its conclusion by one event so we can't give same weight to both that is the reason yes dr jay prakash we event is you are counting the event no the observers the study investigators are counting the event how many people died
That we had a class on sample size calculation, no? For meta analysis, for meta analysis, there is uh, something called optimal information size. There is a uh, similar calculation, but that is something. Mm hmm. Yeah, essentially what it says is that look here, small studies or for that matter, multiple small studies, they may give you some result which will be by chance and uh, may be too good to be true, too good to be true. So for example, there is a study in stroke published in BMJ, uh, you, they were comparing whether giving nasogastric tube feeding versus peg tube feeding, uh, which one is better? And uh, small studies of about uh, less than 100 or 100 subjects says peg tube is better than uh, nasogastric tube, something like that. But it is a small study. It may be uh, too good to be true. So, the question is, you can't have a difference in mortality of 20% just because of changing the modality of feeding. So, it is too good to be true. So, why not we calculate sample size? Let look here. What is the plausible effect size? Plausible reduction is, let's say, because we know that even, even if you do mechanical thrombectomy and all that, you are uh, relative risk reduction is uh, twenty percent. Our absolute risk reduction is, let's say, fifteen percent. By just changing the modality of feeding, you may get uh, absolute difference or risk difference of maybe five percent. You can't expect more than that. So, with five percent absolute difference, calculate the sample size, and uh, if that is, let's say, sample size of two thousand then 2000 is the optimal information size. And uh, uh, you should not trust this study with only 100 subjects, right? So that is, that is why uh, you have to calculate uh, optimal information size. You can, in fact, uh, draw uh, just as in single study also what we do is, Maybe you have calculated sample size based on your estimate of 10% uh, event rate in the experimental arm, 5% in the 10% uh, in control arm, 5% in uh, experimental arm. So a difference of 5%, a relative risk reduction of 50%, right? Now, thus, such a huge effect is rarely seen. It used to be seen in uh, antibiotics uh, trial and things like that. So you may say that this big difference, which is 50% reduction, is unlikely. I think what is likely is 25% reduction, which means 10% will become 7.5%. 7, 7 so let us recalculate the sample size. Now, that doesn't happen in a single study. They always try to justify the sample size. And if you increase the difference, you can justify any sample size, right? Because difference goes in the denominator. You go on increasing the difference, your sample size will go on becoming smaller. So any sample size can be justified by increasing the difference. So uh, people said that whenever you do a study, similarly the other way around, by decreasing the difference, you can increase the sample size, right? So. Uh, what they said was, look here, we don't know the exactly what will happen in the study. What we can do is, if we see effect which is three times more than what we have estimated, then we will stop the study. 
if we find that it is uh, two times uh, more than the effect size, then we will stop at second analysis. Right? So, this type of first analysis, second analysis, third analysis, fourth analysis, when to stop, you can draw a line. If we find three times better outcome, then we will stop. If, if we find three times worse outcome, then also we will stop in the first uh, analysis. Second analysis, we get two times better than estimated or two times worse than estimated, then we will stop. So you will say, look here, if, if this is the your estimated effect, this is where it is. If you get this much effect, then also we will stop. We get this much effect, worse, then also we will stop. But second time, if we get here, then we will stop. Because by that time, you have maybe 75% of the data. Right? Third time, if we get this much, then we will stop. And we will have only three interim analysis. Right? So that kind of rule you can make. Right? And uh, instead of different analyses, you can do different studies. That first st one study or first meta-analysis with two studies, we will conclude if the effect is this much. Right? Otherwise not. Second, uh, or let's say if there are four studies, then we will stop here. If there are five studies, then we will stop here. So you can draw that boundary. That is, uh, that is you keep doing, doing meta-analysis. Each time you get a new study, you conclude only if you get this much effect size, not what the study has said, right? This came up because in magnesium meta-analysis, Salim Yusuf, who conducted the, reported the meta-analysis, he said, oh God, magnesium sulfate is inexpensive, is uh, very convenient and dramatically effective drug in reducing mortality due to myocardial infarction. So why not everybody use magnesium sulfate in myocardial infarction? People said, wait, wait, wait. This is based on small, small studies, nine, meta, uh, nine or ten studies or eleven studies, all small studies. Stop. Let us do a big trial. And limit two trial was done with, I think, 40,000 patients of uh, myocardial infarction. They didn't find any effect of magnesium. So they said, then they started thinking, why did we make this wrong conclusion? And who will think most? Salim Yusuf was thinking all the time because he was criticized that you announced it like as if it is a magic drug. It has no effect, right? So he kept thinking, thinking, thinking and said, why did we make the mistake? Because we believed an effect which was too good to be true, right? So when there is such dramatic effect, don't believe. Think about what is the commonly, how much, the, how much is the reduction in mortality with streptokinase? Maybe 4%, 4%, 5%, not more than that, maybe 2%. How much is the reduction in mortality if instead of streptokinase you use L-teplase? 1%, 1% less, right? So, where, where we thrombolytic drug is giving effect of 1% to let's say 5%, if magnesium gives 20%, should we believe it? It is too good to be true. You better calculate a sample size based on maybe 2% mortality difference, right? And you will get huge sample size. So, do the studies in the meta-analysis have cumulative sample size of that much? The answer is no. Then don't conclude anything. So, he's, uh, I, I know, uh, he had a research student, research fellow, uh, whom he guided to write this paper about optimal information size. And uh, that is what is published in Lancet as optimal information size. So, my criticism to that is, it is not information size, it is sample size. What is optimal sample size? Right? But he says, no, no, we are, we are calculating 
event rate also and sample size both. So we will call it information size. Some people call it optimal research size, right? But uh, uh, main thing is that you calculate sample size. And uh, instead of interim analysis, if you keep on doing meta-analysis, the same thing becomes trial sequential analysis. Nothing more than that. So, so on that, Dr. Sandhya is asking online, huh. was it good uh, study for meta-analysis? Because taking students in the study for MI is wastage of time in such a study. Uh, that's why. This is a hypothetical example. It was not done really, right? <laughs> it, is a, it is to illustrate a point that when you should not give same weight to uh, just based on sample size. It is a hypothetical example. It, has, it was not done in reality. <laughs> okay? Thank you.